<laughs> Thank you, Joan. Uh, happy to introduce Bob tonight. Uh, Bob Poland is one of the leading heterodox economists uh, in the United States. Uh, you know, heterodox economists are the best kind, uh, the, the ones that uh, think outside the narrow box uh, of orthodox economics. Uh, Bob, Bob is a professor of economics at the University of Massachusetts uh, and uh, a co-director and co-founder of the Political Economy Research Institute uh, at, U, at UMass, uh, a very important uh, research institute that does a, uh, excellent a uh, academic scholarship with a public purpose. Uh, Bob's books include uh, a number of books, uh, Contours of Dissent, that's Descent of the U.S. Economy, uh, in, in 2003. Two books on the living wage, uh, um, a 1998 book, uh, The Living Wage, uh, Building a Fair Economy, and then uh, more recently, uh, uh, a, a Measure of Fairness, The Economics of the Living Wage and Minimum Wages. And his most recent uh, uh, book is the topic for tonight, uh, uh, Back to Full Employment. I just want to add that uh, Bob's work on the living wage uh, has been very, very important. Uh, he's been probably the leading researcher uh, on this important issue. He's published numerous uh, papers and reports in addition to these two books. He's traveled to cities across the country to speak about the living wage and has testified before many city councils uh, uh, who were considering uh, 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 living wage proposals. And I, I think this is a, a really important contribution, and I just want to acknowledge that. Uh, Bob's recent work is focused on the green economy uh, and the achievement of the twin goals of sustainable energy and full employment. Uh, he's written a number of papers and reports on this topic, has worked as a consultant on green energy projects for the U.S. Department of Energy and the International Labor Organization, and is currently directing a green energy project for the U.N. Industrial Development Organization. Uh, so Bob's talk tonight, uh, as we've said, will be based on his latest book, uh, Back to Full Employment. And I just want to add a little context here, uh, and that is that the unemployment problem uh, in the U.S. is very serious, uh, and it's more serious than it appears uh, from the official government statistics. Uh, the main reason why the official rate of unemployment has declined uh, somewhat in recent years is that the official estimates of the labor force have hardly increased at all since 2008. It's as if population growth has just stopped. Uh, but what's happening is that jobs are so scarce that millions of unemployed workers have given up looking for a job and they are not counted. Uh, in the official government statistics. And if we just, uh, as an exercise, assume uh, that the labor force over the last several years has grown at a normal rate, uh, then the rate of unemployment uh, would be at least three or four percentage points higher uh, than the official uh, 7.9, more like 11 percent, 12 percent, clearly in double digits, uh, and that's serious. Uh, um, and I think that the unemployment rate is going to remain uh, double digits for the foreseeable future uh, unless, unless uh, the government provides some major uh, job-creating initiatives, and Bob's going to tell us tonight uh, how that can be done. So uh, join me in welcoming Bob. Thank you very much, Fred. Thank you very much, Joan. I'm very happy to be here. And so I guess the plan is I will just uh, warm up and we'll talk about what's in this tiny, tiny, tiny little book. A uh, little bit, give some overview, and then we can have a discussion. So, um, well, as Fred said, uh, yeah, Fred. Fred took all my good good lines there. Or, but um, yeah, the the magnitude of the unemployment situation today is really unprecedented since the 1930s, and it is not, as Fred said, fully reflected in the in the data, at least the data that gets into the headlines. 
Um, so as Fred said, uh, what we aren't measuring when we say 7.9% are the number of people that uh, are not um, trying to get jobs uh, immediately because they've become discouraged. And it also is not including people who wanted full-time jobs but only got very, very part-time jobs. Now, the, the Labor Department does count these people. They're just kind of buried in the, you know, the statistical stacks. And the, uh, if you take just those two groups, the people that wanted full-time but maybe only got two hours a week, they wanted 40 hours, they got five hours or 10 hours, and the people, as Fred said, who were discouraged, the unemployment rate today, officially, this is not something I've made up, is 14.4%. Not 7.9 is, is bad enough, but 14.4. Now, 14.4% is 23 million people. Now, just to try to ground that a little bit, if we think about the population of the 10 biggest cities in the country, starting with New York, uh, L.A., Chicago, Houston, San Diego. Uh, I'm not, uh, it's in the book here. But um, San Jose is 10th. Oh, Dallas. Um, anyway, take the 10 biggest cities, add up their entire populations of all 10. Imagine all the people in all of those cities. That's 23 million people. So that's how severe the unemployment crisis is. Uh, and again, th there is no precedent uh, since we got out of the Great Depression. Uh, so uh, th another statistic. Uh, we had this thing that we now call the Great Recession that followed the Wall Street crash that was caused by excessive speculation on Wall Street. Um, now, according to the official arbiters of when recessions end, the recession started in the last three months of 2007, and it officially ended uh, by June of 2009. That's three and a half years ago. Uh, it, we've been out of a recession for three and a half years, uh, officially. Now. One thing I recently calculated is let's look at this recession relative to all the other recessions that have taken place since uh, the Great Depression. Now, uh, in all the other recessions, you, you you know there are different experiences, but the economy does bounce back. You have a re when you say the recession ends, it actually really ends. You can see that in the statistics, and on average the unemployment rate for the other recessions, sometimes it was severe, but the unemployment rate in the other recessions averaged three years out um, uh, is 6.3%. Uh, uh, and in this recession, the average three years for the three years after the recession ended is 9.2%. So for the three years, I'm not talking about the recession itself. I'm talking about after the recession ended. Uh, it was 9.2 percent, as opposed to the the previous experiences, including you know 1980-82 was was very severe, but then we came out of it. 6.3 um, percent. Now the difference, if uh, if if we actually had a 6.3 percent unemployment rate today. Instead of the average of 9.2, uh, officially that's 4.5 million people uh, that would have jobs now that don't. So we have this very severe problem by any measure. Everybody knows it. Um, you know, the, the presidential race, I mean, Romney was talking about it. Uh, there is, of course, the question of what you do about it. So, um, I, I will mention a few things about what we can do about it, but first let me just make a couple of points. Uh, the first is why, I, I, this is a very, very simple basic point. Why do we care so much about unemployment? I mean, I, I think everybody knows the answer, but it's worth saying it anyway. Um, uh, people need jobs. Um, 
most people are not independently wealthy and that therefore they need jobs, either they themselves or a member of their family who supports other people in the family need to have jobs. Uh, so